perilous mountain climbing, hypothermia, explosions, death, and dinos. Vertical Limit is a rock climbing movie from 2000, and uh, it definitely feels like a movie from the 2000s. It's, it's got that signature late 90s, early 2000s uh, tang to it. And uh, it's definitely an interesting movie. So the opening shot is this sprawling canyon with this majestic bird flying over. Well, I should clarify. CGI bird flying over. And this is how we meet our main character, Peter, who's watching the bird through his binoculars while climbing with his family. Now, Peter's clearly like the nerd of the family. Like everyone else are these tough rock climbers and they got all their gear and stuff. And he's like watching CGI bird. I guess if I saw a CGI bird flying around, I'd probably want to look at it too. But my first impression of Peter was that he was definitely a bit of a nerd until he stuck this sick dino. <sighs> Now, after Peter nails this dino, shit just starts going crazy. Like, uh, the two lead climbers both fall and, like, all their equipment fails, which is, like, the setup of every rock climbing movie. If you've never watched a rock climbing movie before, they all start off with, like, all these people happily climbing and just having a good time. And then everything that could possibly go wrong goes wrong and then some. So all their gear starts popping out of the rock and all their harnesses start getting tangled and their ropes start, like tying around their necks. So Peter's sister is the only one still anchored in. She's got one cam still in the rock. And then below her is Peter and below him is their dad. And they're all hanging by this one cam. So Peter's dad is like, you gotta cut me loose, Peter. Three people's too much weight for this cam. And Peter's sister is like, no, I placed the cam really good. It won't come out. So Peter has to decide if he trusts his dad or his sister who can't clearly see that the cam is not going to stay in. I don't know what it is with these movies in like the late 90s, early 2000s and having to have this like insanely realistic acting when the people are about to die and stuff. Is that what you want? You're gonna kill your Stop sister! It. Stop it, I cut the damn rope! Like nowadays in film, characters are usually pretty stoic when they're about to die. Like even if it's like a tragic death, you know, like a Spider-Man in the Avengers movies. But in this time period, they went like whole hog, like, no, we're gonna go like what it's actually like when people <laughs> are about to die. But it still doesn't pale in comparison to Cliffhanger, where like, I genuinely think that they told the actress that they were going to kill her. So Peter's like, fuck you, dad, cuts him, dad falls. And then uh, this shot that kind of bothered me, they show the dad like slamming into the ground. Like they clearly dropped a dummy for this scene, right? I don't know why they didn't drop it from higher. Like I've fallen harder in real life than the dummy did in this movie. Like it's a dummy, just drop it from the top of the actual rock or something. It'd be way more cool to watch. Or, like I want to see something go like, bah! Okay, one, two. Jesus Christ. So we fast forward three years in the future. Peter is a photographer for National Geographic now, and he's taking pictures of some leopards or some type of cat, and uh, they're not CGI. I was actually pretty surprised that they couldn't have a real bird fly by in the shot earlier, but they could get real leopards fighting on film. And then out of nowhere, like completely calm, this dude just <laughs> takes the most ridiculous fall I've ever seen. Like, it starts off, <laughs> it starts off as, like, a pretty normal slip, but it's not like he trips or anything, he just kind of, like, slips, and he's like, whoa, and then it cuts, and he's soaring through the air. Like, your velocity is not going to increase from slipping, right? So if he's walking slowly and slips, he's just going to fall straight down or slightly forward. He's not going to catapult forward at 10 times the speed he was walking into a rock, but not only does he slam into this rock at a ridiculous speed but then he like spins off lands in like a ditch and then snaps his leg they did a good job with it though like it looks really real the way he lands and breaks his leg but the music doesn't change or anything like this this scene is just here and like there's no reaction to it or anything like peter's just like oh whatever man and then it just cuts away like the music doesn't get dramatic peter doesn't like freak out or like no one reacts to this happening it just kind of happens and then the movie goes on so we find out that peter's in pakistan and uh we get some cool current events from like the 2000s about the uh, siakin conflict between pakistan and india three o'clock time to wake up the indians and then peter is reunited with this sister who he finds out is about to climb k2 so Peter's sister basically tells him that she blames him for everything that happened. She's like, my cam was placed so good, it never would have come out. And you killed dad, 
because he didn't love you. But she's basically just like goes on this whole rant about how Peter sucks and how she's gonna climb K2 to stick it to Peter and prove that she was worthy of dad's love or some stupid shit. And Peter's like, well, if you're gonna climb K2, let me help because I'm an experienced climber. And she's like, I don't need your help, Peter. You suck and you can't climb for shit. And you're the reason dad died, did I mention that? And then literally the next scene, she gets stuck on K2 and has to call Peter for help on the radio. And this is the setup for the film. Peter has to assemble this wild crew full of, uh, you know, like misfits and outcasts. Bro, when I hear we always hype that you blow us. <laughs> and he has to climb K2 to save his sister and prove that it was actually her fault that Tad died and not his. Now, if any of you have watched my movie reviews in the past, I usually only show the setup because I don't want to spoil the rest of the movie. I like to leave a little something to be desired, you know, so you can go back and watch it yourself. And you know, if you thought the setup was interesting or funny, then you can go in and watch the rest of it. The only thing I want to show from the later acts of the movie is this sick downward dino. So overall, Vertical Limit was actually a pretty good movie. It was probably one of my favorite climbing movies I've seen so far. It was just really ridiculous, which once again, the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, they would just kind of pick a theme for a movie like rock climbing and just make a crazy movie about it. But I kind of miss it, you know, because now everything's so specific where like if there's a movie about climbing, they have to make sure that it's like really, really about rock climbing. And then it's like, okay, well, rock climbing is not really that interesting cinematically. But back in the 90s, you know, they were like, oh, what if we make a movie about rock climbing? And the rock climber has to stop terrorists by out climbing them. And I decided that since this is my fourth movie I've reviewed on this channel, that I'm going to start my tier list for rock climbing movies. Starting with the first rock climbing movie I watched, we have Cliffhanger. Not only did Cliffhanger have Sylvester Stallone and Yondu, but it was actually like a really fun movie to watch. It had the most rock climbing out of any of these movies, and it was just a fun movie all around. So I'm gonna have to give Cliffhanger a solid A tier. I like to think that there are some S tier climbing movies out there, or there are some to come. I don't think Cliffhanger's quite there, but it's definitely A tier. It's definitely worth a watch if you like rock climbing. The second movie I watched for this tier list is The Iger Sanction. Now, The Iger Sanction is really hard to rank because the first half of the movie is like D tier. It's like not very good. But then the second half of the movie is actually pretty cool. I would give it like A tier. So I think I'll just give the movie like a B tier. It's definitely not the best movie you'll ever watch, but it is such a weird movie, like genuinely one of the strangest movies I've ever seen. So it's worth a watch in that, right? The third movie on this list is Broad Peak. Broad Peak was kind of weird because like, it's not really my style. I don't really like dramatic recreation movies in general. I think they tend to be boring and I thought Broad Peak was kind of boring. But as far as a dramatic recreation of rock climbing events, it was pretty solid at least. So I'll give Broad Peak like bottom of C tier. It's not quite D tier, but it's definitely not above C tier. And now for the film we just watched, Vertical Limit. Now this one's pretty tough for me because I really liked Vertical Limit and it had a lot of moments that had me laughing out loud, which probably doesn't bode well for like the actual writing or the movie, but it bodes well for my entertainment value, which is solely what this tier list is based off of. And I think just with the cast of kooky characters, the over the top acting, the just hilarious moments where people like fall and shit like that, I'm gonna give it an A tier. I don't think it's as good as Cliffhanger in my opinion. I think Cliffhanger is probably my favorite I watched, mostly just because of how ridiculous Cliffhanger was, but Vertical Limit's definitely up there. So that's my Vertical Limit review and my rock climbing movie tier list. Hopefully I can fill this tier list up over time. I have a lot more movies to watch. I found like a IMDB category of movies about climbing and there's like 200 movies on it and I do plan on watching quite a few of them. So go check out Vertical Limit if you haven't seen it yet or if you think it looks interesting because uh, it's definitely worth a watch.